you for that. And I absolutely love it when my audience are with me and are very, very cheerful. I'm here to tell you a story. I am a storyteller because I come out of a classroom and I visit classrooms very often. I love them. I love the noise of the corridors. I love it when my classroom is buzzing and I love when my teachers say, I want to reinvent the classroom and that's what we come here with. We are here to understand what is building uh, the future ready schools is all about. Do I have a clicker there? I'm going to be very brief um, and I will divide this into two, uh, two parts. Number one, like I said, I want to tell you a story. Every teacher and every educator and every educationist that I have met has talked about someday. You know, if I show you this video that has a very futuristic world, you will say, yeah, someday I need this in my classroom. Well, that someday is here. Those children who are sitting in your classrooms are the future. We all know that. We've created and painted a beautiful picture in front of you. Let me show you an example. I'm going to talk about a child who's a part of one of the leading schools in Delhi with all the facilities available and they do indulge in SDG goals. How many schools here practice SDG goals or foster skills? Mostly, right? Now, because the school had a charter and had that opportunity for that child, she had her mind tinkering. An unfortunate incident happened at her place where her grandmother was hospitalized, bedridden, and she felt extremely sad that her grandmother was at the mercy of other people and she knew she doesn't like seeking help. Now, because she had the facilities at the school, she went back into the classroom, spoke to her friends, and normally you would see students getting, uh, seeking empathy or sympathy but nothing beyond that. Here, the students collectively took a step forward. They took the opportunity of what they have learned in the classroom to help this child's grandmother become more independent. They designed solution around that. They created a bed that could actually help this girl's grandmother defecate without seeking help of anybody in the hospital. They enabled hand gestures and hand movements to do that so that she doesn't have to rely on anyone. That bed is now patented as a product. But that came out as an incidental product. Now, when I tell you about all of this, you would love it. But if I were to tell you, we are looking at education of 2030. We're looking at the trillion dollar question which says, what is this 2030 going to look like? What are the skills we should be fostering in those classrooms? We talk about classroom of the future. The other room is talking about campuses of the future. We also need to speak about the office of the future. Three major parts in this transformation process are people, experiences, and technology. The skill sets that are written here. We need to move from the baseline skill sets. If you remember in my panel also, I brought up the discussion about the skill sets. We need to look at more than just 21st century skills. We need to take a look at not only the New Bloom's taxonomy, but the Dale's cone of experience. That's where the heart lies because that's where the students need to move towards. We don't need to wait for someone to come in and tell us to do so. If you look at it, it's a very practical thing to do. We simply need to make that ground available for students to think critically and create innovatively. We need some of our people to just get up to say, hey, someday is here. Therefore, we need to take a look at how our students are learning. These students that I was talking about were learning in their physics class about electric circuits. In biology class, about the life sciences or the skeletal systems. They were looking at languages being developed in the class. There was a computer science class where they were learning about Excel. They were learning about visual arts. They were exposed to AR, VR. They were exposed to robotics. They were exposed to AI. Everything came together for them as they were working on this project. And this is a real life example that I'm talking about. If I were to focus on this, the project that I spoke about, knowledge from each of these subject areas came together. 
We blurred the lines of subject areas, brought together the learning, and these students developed something that is so practical. So we're not only talking about STEM or STEAM learning or integrated learning, we're talking about 21st century learning skills and technical skills both. If we need to bring these skills together, we need to have a room that's buzzing with the ways in which students can actually have an exchange of thoughts, can start thinking about thinking, go deeper, examine, develop, plan, question, interact, present, investigate, and create. While, to do, uh, while we are thinking about doing all of that, HV and Intel came in together. Now this is the part two of my story. Most of the school leaders sitting here will agree with me the most confusing thing about technology is every day we have new technology coming in. New people walking in with something that will amaze me more than the last one. How do I decide what's the best for me, right? What makes sense in my classroom? So HP and Intel came together to create a classroom that could make sense for you that could bring together the right partners, and we will be able to create a classroom which can enable thinking, which can enable design thinking, which can enable making, and also presenting. So we have four zones in this classroom. There is not an ATL lab or a maker zone in some area of the classroom, or some area of the school, and you know, a physics class happening somewhere and a biology class happening somewhere, but an integrated learning approach which your NCF 2023 also lays upon. So this is the kind of classrooms that we are creating. We are building thinking zones, design zones, maker zones, and state zones to bring together all the thinking, all the kind of skills that we can foster, whether it is going to be class ready, campus ready, or job ready. While we talk about this, there are two choices that you have. Either get disrupted, or be disrupted. As you are looking at HP, you must be wondering what is HP going to do and what is the role that HP plays? HP is committed to better learning outcomes. We are looking at uh, you know, 100 million people being impacted by this better learning outcomes. We're trying to reimagine the classrooms of future. We're trying to bring in the right pieces together so that we can all reinvent the classroom with HP and Intel. What are we doing as a part of it? We are turning that from industrial age to information age, moving forward to the experience age. As we do that, we're moving from rows and uh, you know, the chair linear way into a more collaborative way of learning where students are challenged by proposing questions, the right questions are asked in the room so that they can dwell, tinker about it, and think about solving those problems, exactly what we were talking about in our panel. As a part of this, we begin with the readiness assessment, where you are, leveraging what you already have, and then defining the four major pillars, building a vision with you for your own institution. From there, looking at the innovative uh, learning spaces that I was talking about and drawing the board for learning to begin and professional development coupled with technology blueprint so that the entire landscape has been taken care of as a project for you. When you sign up with HP, that's exactly what you're signing up for. It could be a one year, two year or a multi-year plan depending on how your organization wants to move and you're completely supported as you move through the RTCI, that is reinvent the classroom. So here are the four major pillars. Amongst these, first thing, we help the leaders build that vision and have bring in the culture of change. Mm. Strategic planning is a part of it, exchange of networks, and inclusion and accessibility. For learning spaces, HP is just gonna help you design that whole piece. We're going to bring in multiple ways in which learning can become not only encouraging or interesting, but also curious minds have to sit in those classrooms to actually brew those correct thoughts. From there, we take on to the modern teaching learning, prepare your entire uh, you know, teaching staff for it, and the technology blueprint as well. 
these classrooms are already running in multiple countries and we've seen great impact as you can see the impact right here in front of you. This is the kind of impact that has come in with this kind of an integrated learning model. And we have been able to bring in multiple modes of instruction into that room to make learning possible. So all I'm asking for is moving from industrial age to the experience age and looking at meaningful learning outcomes so that we are able to actually take you into reinventing the classroom. I'll leave you with this question. How ready are we? Have a great day. And I think I don't want to stop between you and lunch, if I'm not wrong, but I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you.